have my trusty bird watt meter. Here's the radio. Got the output of the radio going into the uh, the uh, watt meter, and you have to have your adapters in place to uh, make this happen. And here I have another set of adapters to go from uh, PL259 to uh, BNC connector of my antenna here. So the power is going this way, out the antenna. So if I transmit, it reads about three and a quarter watts. Three and a quarter watts output. Now let's see what's being reflected back. That looks like one watt or maybe 0.85 of a watt. So the 10% rule of thumb uh, rule is 10%, no more than 10% coming back down to the radio. And it should be the minimum with that would be 0.35 of a watt of a watt. And we get something like uh, that looks like 0.85 of a watt. So we do have some reflective power going back that's uh, unacceptable. Let me change the location of this here somewhere else. Maybe that'll make a difference. Maybe I'm too close to it. Nope. Same difference. It got a little bit better. Okay, I got the service monitor on here. And we're going to do a, a simple FCC check with this here. So we're on 462.65 megahertz. It's one of the GMRS frequencies and it's just for testing purposes. So transmit. So the modulation on this is f five, 4.6, 4.8. Point five six watts freak sever almost 300 there 297 now we're going to receive receive at point two point twenty two I can't go any lower than that so the set of the specs is uh point 19 better than 12 db sign ad you can look up what that means later i could go only go as far below as 0.22 i don't feel like doing the uh the uh connections on top the attenuators and stuff but to my ear that sounds okay so i think the antenna has also degraded in uh performance i think from the fall from the rocks there and being on the ground bent like that Perhaps moisture got into the inside of the coil here. But who knows, I would have to take it back to the shop and scope it out and see what it is actually doing there. So here's the return loss of the uh, antenna. I got it in here. Since it's UHF frequencies, it doesn't matter if it's inside my house like this. Uh, the wavelength of that is like six inches. So, um, at least a foot or two away from obstacles all the way around and the return loss on this is 17 dBs 17.66 the man bad mark on it would be 12 dBs return loss so this ten antenna in this frequency 167 megahertz is okay it's passing could be better but uh it's within specs so there you have it the only thing that failed was the charge controller for moisture damage uh, i remember the pre previous year when i took a look inside after about a year of being in the field it was bone dry inside the compartment but this time around like i said it took a tumble from the rocks there i think a critter tossed it over maybe a bear or something or something uh, so this access hole here even though it's gooped up moisture could have gotten in through there because this was on the ground level the snow level uh, 
it might have been covered with snow then with some time and everything uh, the inside just got all wet and you've seen the amount of water that came out of it so uh, that could have been it but nonetheless that board failed water damage shorted out the, ba the battery here though the fuse saved it by doing its job and blew it and took the whole system out down so so that would explain the static for my garage and really poor range that must have been through the toss down from the rocks there and the antenna being upside down and then eventually that compartment maybe got flooded a little bit where the uh, control board was in water it corroded the, these components here and uh, damaged the board shorted out the components blew the fuse took the whole system down completely so all that made sense this thing is pretty much much SOL up here on the hill so I'm gonna take it down to the garage and uh, try another strategy uh, but instead of using a simplex repeater I'm gonna use a crossband repeater this time around and that's my next phase of uh, shit hit the fan communications up here so I got most of the components I need a few things more I have to do some testing here and there and we're gonna go through this whole evolution all over again but using a cross band repeater not a not a simplex repeater but a cross band repeater so we're gonna use a whole new strategy a whole new method to see what works Perhaps it's not a good idea to use one of these cheap old um, voltmeter unless you live in the Arctic or something. Or even then it may fail on you there too. Right now it's on, but if you notice the screen is blacked out. I think the screen has got, gotten so hot that the LEDs are... are the, uh, the display there is totally blanked out because of the heat. You can't see anything. You can't measure anything. This thing is worthless my intermediate dollar uh, amount multimeter here is doing okay in the sun and this has never failed me I dropped this many a times uh, through this everywhere it's been through the ringer for at least six years and it's still going strong and you can see the display out in the hot sun unlike this guy here so that's another thing about this outing is uh, vetting your equipment Perhaps this is not what you need out here. So at a bare minimum, what you'll probably want to take up here, and mind you, you have to hump it up here, uphill possibly. At least in my case, that's the that's what's going on. You'll need a voltmeter, and I like the uh, current clamping ones. And as you've seen from the last scene, this is a piece of shit. Look, it cooled off and now it's coming back to life. But if I leave it here in the sun, it's going to black out again. So I don't recommend these at all now. Go with uh, intermediate dollar you know, amount that, that's good. This particular one is an 380941 XTEC. Anyway, uh, this is not needed, but it's uh, you know, a nice to have. A battery analyzer to see what the uh, the capacity of the battery is while you're up here you figure if this battery has been up here five years already I would just haul up another battery to replace it regardless but uh, I wanted to know what the capacity was after about a year and a half out in the elements up here uh, I didn't know what was broken up here so I brought some extra stuff maybe some replacement parts and uh, if the battery was damaged and there was no juice to there, if I wanted to troubleshoot the rest of the system, I brought one of those uh, USB 12 volt battery thingies. This one here, this power wall, it, it provides 12 volts uh, output uh, on these polymer uh, lithium batteries here. And I could use this temporarily to troubleshoot the system here to replace that. Or in a pinch, if this was an operation or something we could run off of this for a little bit until you know you get the correct parts up here so this was going to be a replacement of that temporarily I brought another 
TYT radio to see if if this radio here was damaged and it's not I was going to replace it with this here though the microphone input of this radio here is broken so it would have repeated but it would have repeated nothing all you would have had is carrier or the power going out but no voice but for troubleshooting purposes uh, I just wanted to know if if it did its you know thing as far as record a message and send it back out and all the other needed signals uh, if I needed to replace it this right here the side connector here for the simplex repeater this guy right here is interchangeable with the Wuxon radio here on the side microphone port there so I could have configured this for those frequencies that I was using and use this as a, a uh, replacement of this damaged gear if that was the cause so I would have been back on the air if just this was uh, operating or not. I would have to do some sort of uh, uh, modification to the battery case here. Get another battery eliminator that converts 12 volts into 7 point whatever volts that this radio takes. Because this radio is not compatible to the battery uh, eliminator of this radio here. So that would have been another sort of change. And I think that's pretty much all I have as far as expedient repairs up here on the hill. Uh, yeah, that's it. And that display there has been out in the sun for a little bit and is blacked out. So that's a piece of shit. This Leatherman worked out okay for this uh, excursion. I would say, yeah, use it because the pliers could be useful for this application and all the other tools but I would recommend an actual screwdriver and Phillips screwdriver or whatever tool specific to the hardware of your equipment here uh, it's not gonna weigh that much more and it'll be faster this time this, I had to wedge this in there pretty deep to get those screws off on the terminals but uh, luckily it worked out but I much rather have real tools and supplement of this. Well, I'm all packed up to go, and it seems like this uh, Mystery Ranch crew cab is working out just fine. It's kind of designed to sort of do some portages of uh, weird shaped objects like jerry cans, and in my case, an ammo can with a battery in it. And it's got enough straps there where I could uh, strap on the solar panel right behind it. And uh, Right now, I'm estimating maybe 50 to 60 pounds, but I'm going downhill. As long as I hold my footing real well, uh, I should be okay. But, uh, yeah, we'll give this a try on the way back. Luckily, like I said, it's downhill, so I'm not going to be in too much pain. It's only a mile. But uh, this place is going to be left without a trace. Uh, that's where the I cut this bush down before it was down to the stump right down there and in about a year and a half time this has what grown on top of it I had a solar panel right here so it wasn't covering the solar panel over here but I used to have it over there and that would have definitely covered up the the uh, panels so what I'm gonna do next time is to have some sort of pole structure support here uh, painted green and elevated above the vegetation here in this clearing. Uh, this is an awesome site to do what I'm doing and I really don't want to abandon it because it's somewhat easy to get to with a vehicle and only about a mile of pain to uh, hike up here. I might explore a couple of ridges behind me over here that's a little bit higher. I might explore that to see what's out there but for now I have no comms in the field it's going down back to the shop and then we're going to upgrade it with a entirely whole new system. We'll see how that works out. Just another strategy, another way of uh, doing some guerrilla comms. My life's so hard. Too much pressure. On a certain type of people. Too much pressure. They're having it easy. Too much pressure. It's helpful.